Hey, dear O-Doers, the fiscal year has ended for Bloom, and it was a pretty good one. As the new fiscal year is starting, we need to close the previous one. Closing a prior year is an important step in generating financial reports, both for analyzing financial health and providing investors with an accurate picture of the company. Here are some best practices to help you prepare for the fiscal year's closing. First, make sure all bank accounts are fully reconciled up to year end and confirm that the ending book balances match the bank statement balances. Confirm that all invoices have been created and confirmed and that there are no draft invoices. Confirm that all vendor bills have been created and confirmed. Ensure the accuracy of all expenses and validate them. Check that all received payments have been encoded and confirmed. Close all suspense accounts. And finally, book all depreciation and deferred revenue entries. The good news is Odoo automatically rolls up the profit and loss statement, meaning it transfers the net of our income and expense accounts to the current year earnings account. So all that's left for us to do is allocate those earnings. So here we are on our database. Let's go to our accounting app, configuration and settings, and we're going to search for fiscal. And in the fiscal period section here, the first thing we want to do is to make sure we have a fiscal year end date set. In our case, December 31st is fine, but you can change it to fit your needs and your financial reports will be updated automatically. If you started your business in the middle of the fiscal year or your fiscal year is longer than 12 months, you can set one manually by clicking on fiscal years here. That's all we need for the fiscal year setup. Next, we want to set a lock date to avoid modification or new records that would mess with the fiscal year calculation. If we go into the accounting menu, we can find lock date. And this menu is only available to users with administrator access rights for the accounting app and only they can add, remove, or modify the lock dates. We have five different date types here, and they're listed so that we can set them in order, starting from the top and moving toward the bottom. The first lock date I want to set is for the sales journal because we constantly have salespeople making new invoices for our customers, and as the accountant, when I begin closing the period, I wanted to be able to limit those. This means that any new invoice that was posted after I set this lock date will have an accounting date after this period. I usually handle registering vendor bills myself, but I still wanted to go ahead and lock those next with the purchase journal lock. And this is going to behave basically the same way, but for the purchase journal. Next, I looked at my tax return and once everything looked right, I used the lock tax return date. And this made sure that no journal entry affects my tax accounts before my lock date. And finally, I have my lock every one date, and this will prevent journal entries from being posted before this date, instead changing the accounting date until after the lock date. What if I make a mistake when setting these lock dates? Are they reversible? Great question. Yes, all four of these are reversible as users with the accounting administrator access rights can still change these dates after they're set. So let's say that we set a lock every one date, also for December 31st of last year and we save. Now, when we reopen the lock dates window, we can remove that date, and Odoo allows us to say that we want to make an exception. This exception can be for me or for everyone, and we have options for how long this exception should last. We can also log a reason for this exception, and all of this information is timestamped and logged in the chatter of the company record. For now, I'll just give myself an exception so that I can finish closing the fiscal year, uninterrupted. Be careful though, because there's also the hard lock date. This field is irreversible to ensure inalterability and to meet accounting requirements in some countries. If it's not required in yours, this field isn't totally necessary. And if it is, make sure not to set this one until you're absolutely sure that it's the correct date, because you will not be able to make an exception regardless of your access rights. Now we need to allocate our unallocated earnings. First, let's check our earnings by going to reporting and to the profit and loss statement. We're in the Belgian localization now, so we're looking at the Belgian profit and loss statement, but we can easily switch to the generic one. And if we look at it as of the end of last fiscal year, we can clearly see last year's total income, our total expenses, and our net profit of 66,819 euros and 34 cents. We can find this same value if we go to reporting balance sheet. 
we set the date to end of last year and we'll look at the generic one as well. And then we have down here under current year unallocated earnings, we have that same amount. So we're going to copy that and go to accounting, journal entries, and we're going to create a new journal entry and name it something recognizable like year ending 2024. Let's change the date to the end of the last fiscal year. And in our case, we will use the corresponding Belgian accounts. So make sure to use the ones that are suitable for your fiscal localization. For a profit in Belgium, we're going to add a line with account 140,000 profits to be brought forward. And we will paste that in the credit column. And then we'll add a line with 693,000 profits to be carried forward and that will be in the debit column. This is a pretty simple example where we're just moving the profits into an undistributed profits and loss account. But this is also where we could split the profits into different equity accounts if we wanted to. For our purposes, we are ready to post. We just recognized our earnings in the balance sheet account, and if we go back to the balance sheet and now check under the allocated earnings, excuse me, unallocated earnings, we can see that it says zero because we've allocated all of them. We can even go to the first day of the next fiscal year and we can say this uh, January 1st and you can see that we have our previous year's unallocated earnings are zero. So we're starting out with a fresh slate for this new year. That's all for this video, but be sure to check out our online documentation for this topic for more information on closing the fiscal year. This has been your pal Dow. I'll see you in the next one.